you. First of all, I'm going to do this uh, intro. When we begin to talk about prosperity, you're not in the way, dear. You're okay. You're fine. Amen. You're fine. But we begin to talk about prosperity, amen. And as we begin to talk about prosperity, God began to deal with me concerning 2014. And one of the scriptures that God was putting on my heart is, how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing, am I right? Okay. I believe that's in Romans, am I right? Amen. Let's turn to the book of Romans. Is that Romans 4? Where is that? Um, let's see if we can find it, amen? Romans, uh, let's see. We need to find that. It talks about faith comes by hearing. Um, and then it says, how, can you, how will they hear without a preacher? And how will he preach? Unless he sent. Somebody find that while I'm throwing. Amen. And so one of the things that I want to discuss with you and talk to you now, you your Thursday night is very important for you. And the reason Thursday night is so important for you is because we can say some things on Thursday that we may not be able to say on Sunday. Because the Sunday crowd is a little different than Thursday. And the Thursday crowd is more mature. You understand what I'm saying? So what I want you to understand, Thursdays is going to be important for you. Because we need to get through this. Faith come by what? Hearing. Hearing. So let's go to Romans 10, 17. Amen. Romans 10. And let's look at verse 17. Because I want to build this tonight. And I want to thank those of you that are watching by internet. This is Apostle Calvin Brown, and this is Harvest International Ministry, 2827 Galleria Drive in Arlington, Texas. You can also email me at ApostleCalvinBrown at Yahoo.com, and I will email your prayer requests back. If you would like a bottle of oil or anything, I'll be more than happy to send it to you free of charge. Now, let's go, let's go here. Go to the website, j4him.org. That's J, the number four, him.org and you can get the address there. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we do open up for the ministry of the Holy Spirit as we begin to minister to your people. I want you to put your hands in your ears and repeat after me. Father, open my ears to hear Father, open my ears what the Spirit would say to the church. What the Spirit would say to the church. Rebuke, we rebuke tradition. We rebuke tradition. We renounce poverty and lack. We renounce poverty and, and that lack. we have all things. And that we have all things. And it's sufficient for me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now I want you to hear me by the Spirit. Amen. Now look look at verse 17. Look at verse 17. Uh, we're recording now. Put on this microphone. It says, so then, faith comes, cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith come by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. So if you want faith for something, what do you have to do? You have to hear it, Amen. If you don't hear it, how can your faith be built up? If no one teaches you on prayer, how can your faith be built up? This is the reason for the school of prayer on Thursdays from 7 to Speak to me. Speak to me. Amen. Elder, put the, I got the microphone here, amen. So if you want God to speak to you, begin to read scriptures on healing. Amen? That's right. That's right. Begin to increase your scriptural vocabulary the way you increase your word vocabulary. If you want prosperity, then you have to hear the message 
of prosperity. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing. And if faith comes by hearing, you have to hear that message in order for your faith to be built. So in 2014, one of the things that we're going to be studying is prosperity. The second thing is the financial anointing and the anointing of the miraculous. I want you to write that down. Say the prosperity anointing, the, prosperity. the financial anointing, the financial anointing. And the miraculous healing anointing. And the miraculous healing anointing. These three areas we need to study on. These three areas. Prosperity, the financial anointing, and the miraculous healing anointing. Jesus began to demonstrate the financial anointing when he turned the water into wine. He began to affect the economy of the wine cellars in the area. And now those wine cellars that would have went to the marketplace to buy wine, they no longer had to buy wine from the marketplace. Amen. Because what? Jesus had miraculously did a miracle in his finances through his profession. He said bring me water. He turned the water into wine. So you got to have some water in you. You got to have some word in you. So he can turn your word into an economy breakthrough. Amen. Amen. Say an economical breakthrough. An economical breakthrough. God can bring an economical breakthrough. God can bring to you what you need. Say the miraculous healing power. The miraculous, the miraculous healing power. Say the miraculous, the miraculous operate, operate. operate. Manifest. 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 The miraculous healing power. Jesus tapped in. He, he turned water into wine. And they look at it as a miracle, but they don't see the economy in it. Jesus was dealing with the economy at this season. Say, deal with my economy, Lord. Yeah, Lift your hands right here. Lift your hands right here. Say, Lord. 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 Let the healing power. Let the healing power for the miraculous. For the miraculous. Begin to saturate my life. Begin to saturate my life. Healing anointing. Healing anointing. Financial anointing. Financial anointing. The prosperity anointing. The prosperity anointing. The miraculous power. The miraculous in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I give you permission. I give you permission. I give myself permission. I give myself permission. To prosper. To prosper. I bless myself. I bless myself. Put your hand on your body. Say, I bless myself. I bless myself. Say, body. Body. You are created. You are created in God's image. In God's image. Therefore, I speak to you. Therefore, I speak to you the word of God. The word of God that you are healed. That you are healed by His stripes. By His stripes and no sickness. And no sickness. No disease. No disease has legal right. Has legal right to overtake this temple. To overtake this Father, temple. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Water me. Water me. Now let's look at this. It says open your mind to prosperity. Well, the only way you can open your mind to prosperity, you must begin to hear the message of prosperity. And turn the page. You must begin to hear that message. Why must, why you must open your mind to prosperity? The forces that generate prosperity are mental and spiritual. In order to conduct a mental and spiritual war on poverty, the first thing you must do is open your mind to prosperity. I'm on page 12 of the handout. You have to say, open my mind. Open my mind, Lord, Lord, to prosperity. To prosperity. Say I'm worthy of prosperity. I'm worthy of prosperity. Say I'm worthy of prosperity. I'm worthy of prosperity. Say I'm worthy of prosperity. I'm worthy of prosperity. God didn't build me for poverty. God built you 
to prosper. He built you to prosper. So you have to open your mind, open your consciousness, open your thinking concerning prosperity and not be afraid of prospering. Say, Lord, I'm not afraid, Lord, I'm not afraid to, prosper. to prosper. I renounce fear. I renounce fear. You got to renounce fear. And so these were some of the things that we was discussing last week. Look at the next page, 13. How in the world, the underlined part, how in the world can poverty be a Christian virtue when poverty caused most of the world's problems? Most of the problems in Africa are based on poverty. Other countries are raiding Africa. Look at the gems that they're taking out of Ghana. Look at the oil wells, Shell Oil Company, stripping Lib Liberia of their, of their precious resources. Look at how all of the African cultures are being stripped for their diamonds. And why is it that only certain classes of people Control it. Poverty is not a Christian virtue. So I want you to repeat after me. I renounce poverty in my life. I renounce poverty in my life. This day. This day. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say, I renounce poverty. I renounce poverty. And I come in agreement. And I come in agreement. With God's word. With God's word. That says. That says. Beloved. I wish above all things, I wish above all things that, thou that thou would prosper and be in health, and be in health as, thy as thy soul prosper. Let me reinforce that. Go to 3 John. Go to 3 John. And I want you to look at verse 1. 3 John. Hallelujah. Verse 2. Go to verse 2. It says, Beloved, I wish, I pray above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. I want you to prosper. I need you to prosper. I need you to have a good journey in life. I want to give you help in life. I want you to have good success in your business affairs. Mm -hmm. This is what he's saying. I want you to prosper. God wants you to prosper. Say, God wants me to prosper. God wants me to prosper. God is God's will for you to prosper. Go to first. Go to, go to Psalms chapter one. Psalms one. Let's go there first. Psalms one. Psalms one. It says, "Blessed is the man." That walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. Why would you believe that it's God's will for you to be in poverty? It says, blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel. Don't listen to the world system. Listen, this is God's system. God want us to prosper. No matter how... See, look at here. Ah, it only takes one of you to become a millionaire that all of us will be rich. All right, all right. It only takes one of you to be a millionaire that all of us will be wealthy. Yeah. It only takes one of you to sow a $10,000 seed and we can be on TV tomorrow. It only takes one of you to sow a $1,000 seed and we can be on TV tomorrow. We could be on TV tomorrow. Therefore, you are not going to be here thinking you should be in poverty. Amen. I rebuke the spirit that calls you to think that you should be in poverty. The miraculous anointing in your life brings you out of poverty. Say, God didn't create me. God didn't create me. For poverty. for poverty. But God created me, God created me for, success. for success. Say, I'm going to succeed. I'm going to succeed. I'm going to succeed. God did not create 
you to live in poverty. Watch this. Why would God create a beautiful woman and then put you in poverty? Why would God create a woman with long hair and a short hair and brown eyes and beautiful skin and, and black as the coal and oh my God and eyes that when you're so white that when you look at it you want to cry and then put her in poverty. Say, look at somebody and say, girl, God don't want you in poverty. God, God, you. Look at somebody and say, God don't want you in poverty. God, 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 God. Say, God don't want you in lack. Say, God want to provide for you. Say, let the miraculous anointing of financial increase come into my life. God wants you to succeed. I want you to succeed. The Holy Spirit wants you to succeed. Why would Christ die on the cross and then stay in the grave? He got out of the grave to show you that if you he could get out of the grave, you could get out of your situation in life. Yes. If the grave can't hold a dead man, how can life hold a man that's living? Amen. Come on here now. You got to rise and shine for your what? Life has come. Yes. God didn't create you to be in part of it. Come on, shake your head. Say, come on, get, 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 get out of my head. Get, get out of my head. Poverty, get out of my life. the word of God. Get the handout, son, and pass these out and make sure. Here they are. We're recapping from last week. This is not this week's lesson. This is just an appetizer. Amen? Amen. I'm on page 19. Amen? Let's go to the bottom of the page. Page, I'm sorry, page 13. I'm sorry, page 13. I need a little something to drink here, please. You can open your mind to prosperity by giving up the ridiculous idea that poverty is a Christian virtue. Turn my mic down just a little bit, please. Thank you. Let's get this right. You must give up. You must open your mind to prosperity by giving up the ridiculous idea that poverty is a Christian virtue. Oh my God. Let's, let's read that again. You can open your mind to prosperity by giving up the ridiculous idea that poverty is a Christian virtue. Poverty is not a Christian virtue. Say poverty is not a Christian virtue. Poverty is not a Christian. Say poverty is not a Christian virtue. Poverty is not a Christian. Say poverty is not a Christian virtue. Poverty is not a poverty is not a Christian virtue. God does not want you in poverty. Say I renounce poverty. I renounce poverty. I renounce poverty. I renounce poverty. Poverty is not my friend. Poverty is not my friend. Some people are out here today. You're listening. You're married to poverty. You're married to poverty. I break. I divorce myself from poverty today. Say I divorce myself. I divorce myself from poverty. From poverty. Lift your hands. Begin to worship. I want to hear you say I divorce myself from poverty in the name of Jesus. I divorce myself from poverty. Oh God, I divorce myself from poverty. Say I divorce my life from poverty. Say I divorce my mind from poverty. I divorce my mind from poverty. I divorce my soul and my spirit from poverty. I divorce my soul and my spirit. Say I disconnect from lack. I disconnect from lack. I divorce poverty. I divorce poverty. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Poverty is definitely a sin and not a blessing. Poverty is a curse, not a blessing. Say, I, I, say, I'm redeemed from the curse. I'm redeemed from the curse. You're redeemed from the curse. Say, there's no curse on my life. There's no curse on my life. There's no curse on your life. Don't let people tell you that you're not going to make it. Don't let people tell you that things are not going to work for you. Let's go to page 14, the bottom of the page. Last paragraph. Let's go, to, let's go to the third paragraph up. It says, you can open your mind to prosperity when you realize that through your study and application of the mental and spiritual law of prosperity, you are not trying to make God give you anything all things are yours. 1 Corinthians 3 21. Say, all things are mine. All things are mine. All things are mine. Repeat after me, Father, I open my life. Father, I open my life. That all things, that all things are, mine. are mine. Father, you are equipping me. Father, you are equipping me for success. For success. Let's look at this. 1 Corinthians. 3 and 21. All things are yours. You see that? All things are yours. Let's read on. It says, in the beginning, God created a lavish universe and then created a spirit man and placed him in the world of abundance. My God, my God. When God, oh my goodness, that means when God Created Adam, he had everything he needed. Right. Say, Lord, loose the spirit of everything. Lord, loose the spirit of everything. Loose the spirit of every good thing. Loose the spirit of everything that you have for me. That you have for me. I receive today. I receive the today. spirit of every good thing. The spirit of every good thing. And then he says, Give him dominion over it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Let's go to Genesis chapter one. Genesis chapter 1. And let's look at this. Amen. Let's look at this. Verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. He said, let us make man in our ship. Let us make man in our illusion. Let us make man in our resemblance. In our likeness. In our similitude. In our fashion. And then we're going to give man. Dominion. And listen to what he said. Over the fish. Of the sea. I know, I know God had to create a lot of catfish. A lot of salmon. Look how man has dominion over the sea. Do you know over a hundred trillion dollars flows into America through Los Angeles seaport? Do you know that Los Angeles seaport more ships from overseas carrying imports come into Los Angeles than any other name, any other country in the world. Watch. He said he gave them dominion. Meaning I'm going to give you rulership. I'm going to let you prevail. I'm going to 
gonna give you subjugation. I'm gonna cause this thing to be subject to you. You're gonna have authority over this. Let's look at it now. It says, you are only trying, this is the bottom of the page 19, you are only trying to open your mind to receive your heritage of abundance. Bottom of page 14. Bequeath you from the beginning. So in other words, I'm trying to get what's already mine. Say, I, I receive. I receive. Say, I receive, I receive what God has for me. Has for Open me. your, or lift your right hand. Turn your palms in. Say, Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive. Say, I'm going to receive with my right hand. I'm going to receive with my right hand. Bless. Bless. This your receiving hand. Huh? This your receiving hand. You can receive with your right and bless with your right. Or you can receive with your right and bless with your left. Say, Lord, bless my hands. Say, Lord, bless my hands to prosper. 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 Prosper. Father, prosper me. Father, prosper me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let the prosperity anointing flow in my home. Let the prosperity anointing Let it flow in my home right now. In the name of Jesus. Let me see the manifestation of this spirit of prosperity. Turn to 1 Corinthians. Turn to 1 Corinthians. And let's go to uh, chapter 12. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And let's take a look at this. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. First Corinthians, and we're going to go to chapter 12. Verse 1. It says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brother, I would not have you ignorant. He said, There are some things that I don't want you to be in the dark over. In other words, I want to give you a greater intelligence for what you need in this hour. Amen? Amen. Amen. Say, I want to open your life up. Now watch this. It says, you know that you was a Gentile carried away unto these dumb idols. In other words, there were certain things that the Gentile nation was doing and now God want that nation to stop doing that so they can operate under God's authority. Now let's look at this. It says, Wherefore well, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse. And that no man can see that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Say Jesus is Lord. Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. So that is proof that you have the Holy Spirit. What does it say? No man, come on, on three, read. One, two, three. No man can say, that Jesus is Lord, but by what? The Holy, the Holy Ghost. So that's proof that the power of God is working in you. That's proof that the Holy Spirit is in your life. Now let's look at this. It says, now there are diversities of gifts, but what? The, the same spirit. spirit. And there are diversities. First of all, he said there are diversities. In other words, he's just telling you that there are different or various types of gifts. Amen. Amen. Your eyes are a gift, but they're in your head. Your ears are a gift, but they're in your head. They give you hearing. Your eyes give you sight. Your nose is a gift that allows you to breathe. See, so it says here, now we, we, we're not talking about the physical gifts. We're talking about spiritual gifts. And there are the difference of administration, but the same law. Now, 
He began to talk about uh, administration. He's talking about the service of these gifts. How you operate in these gifts. Now he's telling you that the spirit operate the gifts. But the Lord is in charge of how they operate. Amen. Amen. Even though prophetess Aria prophesied by the spirit and Pastor Katrina functions under prayer and teaching by the spirit. But look at verse 12. It's verse 4, 12 and 4, diversities of gifts by the same spirit. But in verse 15 it says there is an administration by the Lord, meaning that there is an authority or control by God's administration. You understand that? Government, order, structure. Watch this now. It says, and there are difference of administration but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation. But it is the same God which worketh all in all. Now you see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in all three of the scriptures. In verse number four, you see the Spirit operating. In verse number five, you see the Lord Jesus operating. And in verse number six, you see God, the Father, in operation. So each of them have a responsibility. Now watch this. Verse number seven. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Okay, let's get out. Let's let's take out our school of the prophets. Amen. Let's 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 hurry up. We gotta get our books out. Amen. We, we need to get two books right here, real quick. Amen. Turn to page 82. Turn to page 82. Make sure you put the instrumental. Now watch this. I want you to go to the second paragraph in page 82. On page 82. Now we are in the levels of prophecy. This is School of the Prophets, chapter 17, page 82. Go to the second paragraph. Look at what it says. For different levels of prophecy are discussed. As the church becomes more f f familiar with these levels of prophecy, I believe we will remove the intimidation you may have concerning prophetic mysteries and ministry. Second paragraph. Amen. Everybody got it? Let's look at the second paragraph. Say prophetic ministry. Prophetic ministry. Brings prosperity. Brings prosperity. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. Many churches and individuals do not recognize the realm of the prophetic ministry in which they are functioning. I believe that our Heavenly Father means to bring clarification to the body of Christ. Go to the next paragraph. There are four levels of prophetic gifts. The first gift is the manifestation of prophecy. If there's a manifestation of prophecy, there got to be a manifestation of prosperity. Have you ever seen anybody poor? Let me ask you that question. Have you ever seen anybody rich? Okay? Then there is a manifestation. If there's a manifestation of prophecy, there's a manifestation of wealth. There's a manifestation of increase. There's a manifestation of more than enough. Let's look at this. The manifestation of prophecy. 1 Corinthians 2 and 4. Let's look at that. I, I, got, I got a note there. 1 Corinthians 2 and 4. Let's go back and study this now. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. Mm -hmm. So this is a manifestation of prophecy through preaching. And look how the preaching came. The preaching came through a demonstration of the spirit and power. So if there is spirit, there has to be power behind it. If there is prosperity, there's got to be wealth behind it. If there's prosperity, there has to be a financial relief. Faith come by what? Hearing. 
They come by hearing. Say, I'm opening my mind. I'm opening my mind. Spiritually. Spiritually. To prosperity. To prosperity. Because if you get prosperity naturally and you spiritually done, you're going to be one broke person. How many people have won the lottery and broke today? Do you know they're doing a study on football players that have made 20 million, 30 million, 40 million dollars and they're broke today and they're, they have to get resumes and go get in a line and look for a job because they had no spiritual awareness of who they were and why God created them. Let's look at this. Let's go back to the book. For the page 82, third paragraph, the four prophetic gifts are the manifestation of prophecy, the grace gift of prophecy, the spirit of prophecy, and the office of the prophet. You see that? The grace, let's look at the grace gifts. Go to uh, 1 Peter 4 and 10. 1 Peter 4 and 10. As every man have received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as a good steward of the manifold grace of God. So that means each one of you sitting in here has a level of grace. Each one of you sitting in here tonight, there is a gift of grace on your life. God, God has given you grace to function. There is a gift in your life. Whether you are operating in that gift, I don't know. But I'm telling you, if you sit under the prophetic anointing, it will bring the gift out. Say the grace gift. The, the grace, grace gift. gift. Let's look at the book. The grace gift of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy. Let's look at the spirit of pro prophecy. 1 Corinthians 12 and 10. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 10. To another, the working of miracles. Mm -hmm. To another, Prophecy. These are the gifts now. Mm -hmm. To another, discerning of spirits. Mm -hmm. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Now, these are gifts that operate in the body. Now, watch this now. Let's go up. Let's, let's go up a little bit. I want to show you something here. I'm going to go up to a little bit. Go to verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to do what? Profit. profit. God wants you to profit. He wants you to be encouraged. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gift of healing by the same spirit. Verse 10. To another the working of miracles. To another what? Prophecy. Everybody don't have the same grace. Everybody don't have the same gift. So you have to function under your gift. You have to function under your grace. Watch this. It says and the office of the prophet. You see that? Said the office of the prophet. Go to 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Go down to verse 28. Go to verse 28. And God hath set some in the church first apostles, secondary prophets, third after that miracle. These are the four levels that we need to start operating in. 
The first thing that needs to operate in a New Testament church, and God has set some in the church, what? First, what? Apostles. Apostles are first. The apostolic anointing is first. The apostolic anointing covers the prophetic anointing because don't you know prophets can get off? Oh, you ain't heard nothing I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Come on. They can get off. Meaning that prophecy, when people begin to speak, if somebody come to you speaking crazy, speaking negative, that's a false prophet. Amen. That's right. Why would God put all of this power, put all of this grace, put all of this love in you, and then someone begins to talk? derogatory towards God concerning someone you know. That's a false prophet. So the, what? It says the first apostles, mm -hmm. second prophets, third what? Teachers. Teachers. After that, miracles. We have apostles in the house. We have prophets in the house. We have teachers in the house say, Lord, loose the miracle anointing. Lord, Lord, loose the miracle Come on, lift your hands and say, Lord, loose the miracle anointing. Lord, Lord, loose the miracle in my life. In my life. Father, give us demonstration of the word. Father, give us demonstration. Not enticing words. Not enticing words. A man's wisdom. A man's wisdom. But demonstration. But demonstration. And power. And power. Of the Holy Ghost. Of the Holy Ghost. Say, Lord, Lord release, release the anointing, the anointing in, my life. in my life. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. So this is what you begin to pray over. Say, Lord, you said first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles. Then look at what he says. Then gifts of healing, helps, government. Diversities of tongues. Look how far down tongues are. We speak in tongues more than we see the power of God. It shouldn't be like that. Apostles, prophets, teachers, miracles, healings, gifts, helps, governments. Tongues is the eighth thing on the list. Tongues is number eight. On the list. Say divine order. Divine order. If you follow the order, you begin to pray. God, we lift up the apostles of the earth. We lift up the apostles. We lift up the prophet. God, I thank you for the teachers. Father, loose the miraculous anointing in the house, Father. Let there be healings that come forth. Let there be helps that come forth. Let there be government. Let there be diversities of tongues in the house. In the name of Jesus. Say, yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. That's divine order. So prophet, I walk as an apostle. Prophet walks as a prophet. Prophet is real walks in the office of a prophet. Pastor Petrina walks in the teaching ministry of a teacher. So we got now God demonstrate the miraculous. Demonstrate the miraculous. Let the miracle anointing come. Gifts of healing. Give it says government. Here's an evangelist. Mama walks in evangelistic anointing. She's always out evangelizing. These are gifts. Yes. They're gifts. Government. It says helps. Elder Arby is an adjective for me. These are ministries of helps. Yes. And just because Prophetess Aria helped me with a little juice, it don't mean that's what she's supposed to be doing. But prophets are servants. So the more, the more, the, if we are comfortable as the man and woman of God, as the, as the angel of the house, then it's more easier to minister. That's right. You can get a greater breakthrough. You can get greater revelation. I'm putting a demand on all of you to be more consistent. Yeah. I'm putting a demand on your life that God will begin to open doors in your life. 
that you won't be hindered on Thursday in the name of Jesus. And that whatever ailment, whatever situation that you're dealing with, that you would press to it. Prophets got to move that prophetic anointing before you leave your house. God, I lift my hands on my doors. Holy Ghost, go before me. I loose my ministering angel. Every crooked place, get straight in my life. Rebuke the devil in your life. Take authority over every spirit that's harassing you. Don't let nobody harass you. And then you speak, you prophesy. Amen. You in a prophetic house? You under this prophetic house? You under this anointing? This anointing on my life? This anointing on prophetess life? It's a spiritual anointing. I am sold out. Prophetess is sold out. This is what we do. This anointing will flow to you and it'll be greater than mine. What father don't want his daughters to be great? What father don't want his sons to be great? Let's read on. We need to come to a close. It is important that you understand these four areas so that you will know in which realm you operate. Where do you operate? Do you operate in the manifestation of prophecy? The grace gifts of prophecy? The spirit of prophecy? Or the office of the prophet? It is important that you understand these areas. Some people who operate in the, in the manifestation of prophecy think they are prophets. Just because you can give a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom don't make you a prophet. Listen to this. There is no such thing as the nine gifts of the Spirit, first of all. There's more than nine gifts of the Spirit. Let me, let me, I don't have my Bible in here. Where's my other Bible? I need my other Bible. I need my other Bible. But I want to show you something here. Now, we just read, uh, you know how people talk about the nine gifts of the Spirit? Well, can I tell you there's more than nine gifts of the Spirit? We just read all the gifts here in the book of uh, First Corinthians, am I right? Well, when you study the book of, uh, of, of Ephesians, what does it say? It says apostles. What else does it say? Prophets. Am I right? Let's go there. Is it Ephesians chapter 3? And I'm closing. Let's look, let's look at this. Let's go to Ephesians 4 and 11. Okay. So let's look at some more gifts that the God has put in the body of Christ. Ephesians 4 verse 11. And God gave some what? Apostles. Some prophets. Some evangelists. And some pastors and some teachers. That old five gifts right there. You know I'm a gift to you. I'm a gift to you. I'm a gift. God gave, God has given me a, a living person to be a gift in your life. And he gave some apostle. Everybody isn't an apostle. Everybody isn't a prophet. Watch this. Go to the book of Romans. And let's go to chapter. Mm, well, let's go to chapter 8. Let's go to chapter 12. Let's go to chapter 12. Okay. And let's go. Uh, to verse 4. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not what? The same office. I mean, what would you look like with four pair of hands? What would you look, look like with four pair of ears or four pair of eyes? You'd be deformed. But listen to the gifts. It says he's relating the gifts now, the natural gifts, to the spiritual gifts. He said, now look, look at my body. I got one body. Huh? But look at all my gifts. My hands are a gift. My feet are a gift. My, 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 my toes are gifts. My ears are gifts. So now he looks at Romans chapter 12 and verse number 4. Look at the spiritual side. Now I just read five gifts from the book of Ephesians 4.11. Then I also read the gifts in Romans chapter 12. 
uh, in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Am I right? So that's over 15 gifts right there. But watch this. Here's some more gifts in Romans. It says, verse 5, So we, being many, many members, are one in Christ. One body in Christ. And every one member, one of another. What is he saying? He said, listen, we all are in one body. We're in the body of Christ. Say the body of Christ. The body, the body of Christ. Christ. When you deal with prophetic ministry, you don't deal with church. You deal with the body of Christ. The church is built. The body of Christ is what he's trying to tra train. Say the body of Christ. The body of Christ. So why would you talk bad to the body of Christ? Why would you put down the body of Christ? Why would you speak any kind of way to the body of Christ? If I kick my hand right now, I, my hand is my hand, but I'm going to feel it in. When you're walking late at night, 2, 3, 4, 1 o'clock in the morning, and you strike that coffee table with no shoes on, that toe is going to hurt and it's going to send a sensation through your whole body. Why would you put down your body? Mm -hmm. Say the body of Christ. The body, the body of Christ. Christ. Watch this. Verse 6. Having then gifts what? Differing. Differing according to what? The grace. The grace. Say there's a grace on my life. There's, there's a, a grace, grace on my life. Say Lord reveal to me. Lord reveal to me. The grace. The grace. That's in my life. That's in my life. Having then gifts different according to the grace that is given to us, whether what? Prophecy. Let us prophesy according to what? The proportion of faith. So it's showing here that you don't have to be in the office of a prophet to prophesy, but you have you're gonna prophesy according to your grace, which is operating through faith. Watch this. Then it says. Or ministry, let us wait on our what? Ministry. Well, he's not saying wait. He's not saying wait, just sit there and do nothing. He's saying to you, wait the way a waiter would wait on you when you go into a restaurant. That waiter is what? Seriously. But he's waiting. He's waiting. He's not waiting, waiting on the bus. No, that's not what he's saying. He wants you to wait to serve. In other words, get in that office and wait. And come on, I'm walking around. I don't need my hand, but my hand is waiting to be used. And I tell my hand, put your hand up. So now my hand is what? Serving my body. Uh -huh. God wants you to build he wants you to get stronger. He wants you to understand what he's created you for. Listen, he says, or ministry. Let us wait on our ministry. Verse 7, Romans chapter 12. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Learn how to, you're teaching. That teaching ability comes up in your life. Or he that exalts. You know how you meet people and they just... Man, exalt you, man. You, you know, you're doing good. You, you look well. How you doing? You know, you meet people and they always got a smile. That's the way you should be. Exalting people, not tearing people down. Come on, watch this. Or he that exalted on exaltation. He that giveth. Oh, wait a minute. You mean there is an, a, a gift of giving? There is a gift of giving. Say, Lord, give me that gift. Lord, give me that gift. Say, give me that gift. Give me that gift. Do you know God can bless you to be a giver? Do you know that God can put finances in your hand? Put resources in your hand? Oh, my God. A gift of giving. Oh, my God. Let me look at this again. Lift your hand, somebody. Say, Lord, put this anointing on my life. Yes. Lord, put this anointing on my life. Say, let this anointing for giving be on my life. Be on my life. 
be on my life. In the name of Jesus. 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 Now he said, He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. You know that word simplicity means? This is the Greek, Greek definition. It means singleness of mind. It means liberality. It means bountifulness. It means generosity. That's the Greek strong concordance number 572. He said, listen, now listen. That is an anointing, or he that rule, let him rule with diligence. Let him do business well. Or he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. He said, let love, verse 9, be without dissimulation. In other words, don't be a hypocrite when it comes to love. Be sincere in showing each other love. Abhor, detest that which is evil, wicked, and cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another. Hallelujah. Father, we just come to you. And we just ask you, Lord, to begin to minister to our heart. Begin to minister to our soul. Begin to minister to our will. Begin to do exceeding, abundantly, above all that we may ask or think. God, I thank you today for the service today. I thank you that you stirred their faith. I thank you, Lord God, that you are imparting unto their heart imparting unto their spirit, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you to do exceeding, abundantly above, all that we may ask or think, according to the power that work in us. Father, you didn't call us to poverty, but you called us to prosperity. You called us to abundance. And work a miracle in our life. And do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. We speak over the people tonight. Your word. Now bring demonstration of the word. By the spirit and by power. We come to you not with enticing words of man's wisdom. But we speak the revelation of God. For those of you that are on the internet. We want you to write us at Harvest International. Just go to j the number 4 himorg or email me at Apostle Calvin Brown. Calvin with a C. Apostle Calvin Brown at Yahoo.com. I'll answer your email. You want to send in a seed to the ministry, just go to the website and hit the donation button. Those of you in London, those of you in Paris, those of you in France, those of you in Nairobi, those of you all across the world, I want to say God bless you tonight. And you've been listening to the sound of an apostolic voice in the 21st century. I'm coming to your country this year. Look for Harvest International and the prophetic team. God bless you.